So this vector space of n by n matrices is not what we're really interested in. We're interested in a subset that I'm going to call GLN of R, which is a subset of all n by n matrices over R. And this subset consists of all matrices A, such that the determinant of A is not equal to 0. Or equivalently, A, such that there is an inverse matrix A inverse. So for one by one matrices, the, the set is everything but the zero matrix. But for two by two matrices, you have to throw away other matrices. For example, you have to throw away that matrix that we wrote down before like this. This is not in GL2 because its determinant is 0 times 0 minus 1 times 0, which is 0. So this is a large set of n by n matrices. It's defined by the non-vanishing of a certain polynomial on this set. So almost everything's in it, but we just want to look at that set of matrices, the invertible ones. By the way, if an inverse exists, it's unique. Let's write that. Let's prove that for ourselves. This, again, is all in Artin's chapter 1. Exists, it is unique. So one can talk about the inverse of a matrix. There can't be two different matrices that serve as an inverse for a matrix. And the reason is the following. Suppose we had two inverses. So suppose I could say AB is equal to A times C, and it's also equal to I. Suppose that were the case. And I want to show B is equal to C. Well, remember that what an inverse is defined to be is not just a right inverse under multiplication, but a left inverse under multiplication. So if I took this thing and I multiplied on the left by any matrix that inverts A, for example, B, I could say, well, this implies that BAB is equal to B times AC. And then I use the associative law to reassociate things. This, on the other hand, is BA times B. And this is BA times C. And since B was assumed to be an inverse for A, this is equal to the identity times B. And this is equal to the identity times C. And the identity times any matrix is itself. And therefore, B has to equal C. So even though this matrix here doesn't have to be unique, as I said, if A were the zero matrix, any matrix B would work here. However, if you use the canonical one, the matrix of cofactors, and the determinant turns out to be non-zero so that you can divide by it, then that inverse is, in fact, unique. And so I should add that. There is an inverse matrix A inverse, which is unique. <coughs> 